Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Loop Learnings, and this is the next video in the series. We are making inventory management system. If you are new to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever I you upload a new video. And by the way, even if you are not new to my channel, if you are returning back, please make sure that you also subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever I upload a new video. Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about uh, the queries uh, that we are going to create for inventory management. Now, this is going to be a short video, and um, um, I'll just demonstrate a very, very important aspect of uh, this application. Now, before I do that, what I would like to do is I would like to plug in a, one of the channel uh, that I really like. Now, some of you, uh, well, maybe most of you who uh, watch these videos, maybe are uh, you know interested to learn or maybe are working on daily basis on ppt powerpoint so if you are someone who are interested to learn about powerpoint uh, i would strongly suggest uh, recommend that you subscribe to this channel called ppt edge that's the channel name and uh, i will share uh, this channel's information in the description of this video please please do click on the click uh, click on the link in the description for this channel and visit this channel i can guarantee you will learn a thing or two about uh, the powerpoint if you want to learn about animations making your slides beautiful um you know transition from one slide to another slide what kind of font fantastic content so please do watch a ppt edge and uh, that's it that's the plug that i want to uh, add in into this video um so let me know in the comments if you have done the subscribe and uh, you have watched one or two video of this uh, channel do let me know in the comments below right i wanted to also thank you for your continuous support uh, honestly you guys are amazing uh, because anytime i upload a video i don't expect that people will watch but you guys watch and you guys comment also so thank you so much appreciate it uh, now coming with coming back to the actual content of this video as i said we are going to create a query uh, well, two, three queries we are going to create. Why do we need to do that? Let me explain you. Let me tell you. If I double click on this uh, sales order form, we click on one of the categories. Okay. What you see in this list box, in the products list box, is basically this is free flow information coming from the products table. That's it. It doesn't have any link to the inventory, it doesn't have any link to the available stock in the inventory management in the inventory database so we need to fix that we need to have another column here that is called atp which means available to promise and the purpose of that column is to show you what stock is available for a given product so if the product is zero less than zero and the user tries to add it should throw an error saying hey this is unavailable so you can't add it all right so that's the purpose of this video that's what i'm going to uh demonstrate that now to achieve this what i will do is i'll close this and we'll come back to this uh, sales order form by the way later on i'll go to the inventory table remember every time we sell something every time we receive something uh we keep a track of that in the inventory table and we are going to utilize this table i've added some dummy transaction dummy data to demonstrate in this video so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make two videos uh, sorry, two, two videos. I'm going to make two queries separately. One query for uh, the transaction type one, which is purchase, and the other query for transaction type two, which is sale. So we are we are going to have a one overview of what we have purchased for a given product, what we have sold for a given product. So we can subtract and we get information called atp available to promise now this is the most simplest form of inventory management uh, in actual very sophisticated applications inventory management there are lots of things that are considered you know there's a product type uh, order cycle lead time safety stock a safety stock for lead time safety stock for um, demand and demand type and demand cycle there's a whole lot of things that are considered but this is the most simplest form of inventory management to be very honest so the point is that you take learning from here and you apply and make a very sophisticated application 
related to inventory management system. So let me create two queries. So I'll go to the create button. I'll click on uh, query design. And in here, I'm going to choose the inventory table and I'm going to choose the product table as well. Now, from the product table, what I'm going to do is get the product information, which means the product ID, product name. All right. Uh, we are also going to get the information such as, okay, no, that will be later on. Um, in here, from the inventory table, what I'm going to do is we are going to fetch the information such as, transaction type and the quantity. Now, if I'll run the query, well, it's essentially the same that you saw in the table. There's nothing much different, except we are going to do a filtration of this query. So let's go ahead and do that. In here, I'm going to go to the query design on the top and I'm going to click on totals. And in here, I'm going to do the uh, total here, quantity, I'm going to make it as sum. Now, if I run it, now what will happen is it will sum the quantity. It doesn't matter if we have sold or purchased, it will sum up the quantity for each product. How many uh, records do we have in here? We have around 53 records, or maybe more than 53 right now. Okay, double of 53 because we have purchased and sold together in this. So what I'm going to look at, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a filtration of only the purchase, first of all. So we'll go to design view. In the criteria, I'll give one. Remember, transaction type one is uh, purchase, transaction type two is sale, and transaction type three is return from the customer. So right now I'm interested in uh, uh, purchase, so I'm going to uh, do that in the criteria. Now we should have the 53 uh, lines here because we have number of, Products that are uh, in our database are 53, that's why. Now, I don't like this sum of quantity. So let me change it to receive quantity. So I'll go back to design view. And in here, I'm going to say REC QTY. So that's the quantity that we have purchased. That's why it's a receive quantity. All right, so we're done with this query. Let's save it and we'll say receive Q, all right? Now, I'm going to save your and my time and I'm going to copy the receive query and I'm going to paste it. All right. Uh, but I'm going to give a different name that is sold queue. All right. And now I'm going to double click on this query. Instead of one, we're going to filter this query with two. Remember, we have the sales information with the transaction type two. There you go. So we should have 53 lines here as well. So now we have the, oh, hang on. We need to change this receive quantity to sold quantity, something like that. Okay. There you go. Now we have two queries, one for the receive quantity, one for sold quantity. Now we'll merge these both queries into one mega query. Okay. So we'll go to the create tab. We'll go to the query design. In here, I'm going to fetch the information. For example, uh, receive query, sold query, and we're going to fetch the information from the table as well. So where is the table? Products table. Here we go. So we have the two queries. I'm wondering why the sold query doesn't have the link to the product ID. Anyway, we'll, we'll see later on. Okay, so let's get the product ID, product, and let's get the receive quantity and the sold quantity. Now, if I will run the query, data sheet view, uh, data sheet view, and we should have 53 records. You can see here, and in the data sheet view, we can see that we have a product for, let's say, iPhone 15 Pro Max. We have received 10 quantity. That means that's our purchase, and we have sold two. We're going to add another column, which call, which is called ATP, available to promise. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to design view. And we'll say ATP, uh, and that would be receive quantity minus sold quantity. All right. Okay, that's about it. We'll go to the data sheet view, and now you can see that we have received 10 iPhone 15 Pro Max. We have sold two. The remaining ATP available to promise is eight 
quantity perfect this is what we wanted for all of uh, the product that are in our database now say let's save this query uh inventory oh, where am i writing there we go not here let's save the query okay inventory queue now we're going to have uh, two more set of information we are going to have from the product table we are going to have the category id and we are going to have the selling price as well why do you ask let me show you okay so we have very nice query that gives us a full overview of what's going on in terms of stocking so now we are going to go to the uh, sales order form and why do we need to do that well let me show you we'll come here on the products list box we'll go to the form design property sheet we'll go to the data tab we'll go to the row source dot 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 in here we're going to fetch the query which we have just made called inventory queue inventory queue okay so we are going to actually have this information this uh, query deleted this table deleted from this query designer and we are actually we are going to choose the table for all the records in here and we can delete this table from here okay hang on all right so category id do we have category id here yeah category id we do have okay let's save that and now if we'll go to the data sheet view what do we have we have nothing why there is no problem at all because there is a criteria for this particular query so we don't need to worry about it what i need is however is atp that's an extra column i need in this query so we have zero one two three four we have total five query no sorry five columns and the column number four holds the information about atp so i close that and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to increase the width of the form a little bit okay all right so let's increase the width why do you ask why i'm increasing well you know that we have to showcase the new column in the product uh list box okay so i'm done with that let's select the list box we'll go to the property sheet and we come here instead of four now the column count of five remember we have added atp here and in here we're going to have the 0 0.7 width of the atp now if i will go here if i come here now we have another column called atp all right that's what i want it i wanted to have live information about the atp okay now let's test it out whether this definitely works or not okay before i do that another thing i want to do is you see if i double click here the product adds in the sales order now if the quantity if the atp is zero less than zero which means negative then we want to throw a message box and we do not want to allow user to add that product in the in the list box of the sales order detail so let's fix that well it requires three line of code to be very precise so we go here we go here and in here we'll come here okay and we'll say hang on let me copy this okay now we are going to say else if me dot list products dot column column number four remember in the column number four the atp information reside equals to a less than zero then through a message box that this action cannot be performed as the product is out of stock all right something like that you can modify it and that's about it that's what i wanted to show now let's get back and let's test it out whether this will work or not okay so we click here 
now we can see that home assistant speaker we have added one quantity in here what's the um atp right now uh, atp right now is six that means six are available so home assistant speaker six quantity is available so if we will invoice and if our code uh, sorry queries work properly when we come back after invoicing the home assistant speaker should be five because we have already sold out of six we have sold one quantity likewise if we'll say printer laser okay now printer laser let's see how many printer lasers we have so i will press p so printer laser this is the printer right now we have nine available available to promise atp nine if i will invoice and i come back again because we have sold two the remaining should be seven all right simple math now let's go ahead and uh, you know remember this printer laser and home assistant printer laser right now nine home assistant uh, speaker right now how many we have six okay all right let's do the invoice invoicing is done and if i now if i now double click here and i want to see uh how many uh whether we have done the correct mathematics or not home assistant speaker what's the quantity six right now we have five because one we have sold then we were saying that we have we had nine pieces we have sold two for the printer laser so let's check that now we are left with seven because we have sold two so our query is working and this is the most important aspect of uh, managing the sales order functionality giving that user flexibility and information right um, on their in in front of them about the atp so they can take decision they can inform to the customer and that's about it that's what i want to demonstrate this was said it's a small video do check out the ppt edge channel make sure that you do uh if you like whatever you've seen subscribe uh, smash the like button tell me in the comments below uh subscribe to the channel if you have not and hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever i upload a new video that's about it i'll see you in the next one